Hi guys, welcome to my channel, A Bush Baby Abroad. My name is Megs and this is my story. I am going to try and not ramble, but it's been a very long process. We've now been in New Zealand for eight years and we started the process about two years maybe a year and a half before actually getting to New Zealand so I am having to think back and put it all into perspective I think the best place to start is is right at the beginning I'm originally from South Africa I was brought up on a little chicken farm in the middle of nowhere when I was about eight years old, we moved to Botswana. We spent the next 17 years in Botswana. I did go to boarding school in South Africa uh, for high school and then I went to university briefly in Cape Town before returning back to Botswana and then meeting my partner. There are a lot of reasons as to why we decided to move, which I will get into into more detail in a separate video. But we moved to New Zealand after um, initially my parents were attacked, which then affected everything. And then a whole stream of other terrible situations happened. I was desperately looking for anywhere. So I found us a seminar that was being held in Johannesburg that was discussing how to get into New Zealand, the best options, if it was for you. We then went to the seminar where we met an immigration agent who was advertising, obviously, uh, New Zealand and how he could possibly and potentially get you visas to go and live in New Zealand. And it all seemed great. No crime, no major political disruption of any sort. We listened and none of the pathways really seemed to fit. You know, the usual run-of-the-mill, you know, finding a job, essential skills list, all, all the general ways and visas that you could possibly get in and the age limits. And none of the pathways that he was talking about seemed to fit us. So by the end, I was quite disheartened and I was like, well, you know, well, I tried. Um, my dad turned to me and he said, come on, let's go talk to him. Maybe if we tell him our situation, he could recommend a pathway that would work for us so I said okay and off we went and there was quite a few people talking to him and we waited and then we introduced ourselves and my dad explained that he owned a business in Botswana and that would have to be a matter of us as a whole going as a whole family he said there's an entrepreneurial work visa where you invest into the country, open your own company and you'll then get residency and you can go as two applications, so 50-50 shareholders. We then discussed further with the agent who decided to come to Botswana and bet between him and my dad and I, we, we drew up a business plan which we probably didn't do correctly but not knowing that we were doing it incorrectly we sent everything off my dad then started the process of selling his business we waited if I remember correctly just under a year so I would say 10 possibly 11 months and we then got our initial entry visas into New Zealand to begin. Now within that entry level 
entry visa, we did we only had a certain amount of time to get into the country and set up the business. So we had to, I think within, I think it was six to nine months, we had to be in the country with certain things in place in order to get our full three year uh, entrepreneurial work visa. Everything then went into high gear. Uh, we sold up, we packed up, it was chaos. And next thing we were buying tickets and it had been decided that myself and my husband would go first as we had less things to sort arrangements all of that so we booked our tickets and I think that's when it became real for me that we were we were moving country again but at the same time I was so excited I was so done with everything that was going on at the time I was so done with the waiting and the unknowing you know because you you, you live in a constant state of am I am I not am I am I am I not are we are we not and I think that has been our entire time in New Zealand as well which can be exhausting it's it is exhausting The 7th of August, my mother and father-in-law drove my husband and I down to the airport and we caught a flight to Singapore initially. We then flew Singapore from Singapore onto New Zealand. We were going to stay with a woman that my dad had known growing up, but she was now living in New Zealand and her and my mum had been in com had you know been talking and communicating and she'd opened up her, her home to us and we will always be grateful for that we then so they they picked us up from the airport i just remember it being like we were arriving and it was cold and it was raining and i was like oh no yeah and that first month it was wonderful it was amazing to wake up and there was the ocean because their house literally looked over the ocean it was incredible we then started doing all the necessary things that you need to do get setting up a bank account and then going and getting our driver's licenses which we had to actually retest for because both my husband and I had gotten our driver's licenses in Botswana, which is not an accredited country, I want to assume. Yeah. I didn't have to, we didn't have to do the whole process, so we only had to do our learner's license and then I think the practical, which turned out to be a whole new experience for us. Um, that again is probably going to be another video because I think it took me three times to pass and I was like horrified because I mean I'd been driving um, we, I moved here when I was tw 26 I think 25 26 we bought a car I think we stayed with the people we first lived with for a month and then after about two weeks, I think two or three weeks, we started looking for an apartment or somewhere to live, which was new experience for us again. As you know, nobody really wanted to rent to us because we didn't have any references. We had just arrived in the country. It was a little bit tricky and a little bit difficult um, eventually we did find an apartment I did also have to keep into mind that we did need an extra bedroom because my parents would be joining us and initially we would all have to live in this apartment we did eventually find a tiny two-bedroom apartment we then had to go obviously we, yeah, that was the best part we had to go shopping for all our stuff and that was great because the selection here compared to Botswana is huge. It's immense. It's a whole new world. 
my parents had arranged a container that was one of my mother's uh, specifics is that she wasn't going to leave her things behind so my parents brought a container so we knew that there were certain things that were coming like our bed so we lived on a blow-up mattress for the first four or five months that we were here my husband was then going for loads of interviews and trying to get a job and that was very difficult. Every step for us has been, it hasn't been smooth sailing, it has been one difficult task after another and you know just as we get okay we, we got that and you know something else would happen so like we just found an apartment and now you know my hubby was just not finding a job though and in that time as well I was starting to set up all the the back end of the company you know company name the registering blah. eventually I think two and a half months after we arrived my husband eventually got a job as a retailer because he was obviously on my spousal visa so he was the only one who could actually work due to the fact that he had an open work visa, whereas I, in my visa, it specifically says that I can only work at my company. That's why I was starting the whole process, because you only get a limited amount of time to get from your home country, get into the new country, set up base, set up company, get everything going. My parents arrived on the first of December and then obviously we all had to live together my dad arrived both my parents I don't think arrived in the right headspace if I'm being honest I don't think any of us arrived in the right headspace and right from the beginning that's when the the, the entire tumbleweed began in January we formed the company and my dad and I began work at our new company and we started the visa process once again to get our initial three-year work visa. We then found my dad, oh, as far as I know, had an old acquaintance whose husband was looking for work he came on board as a sales representative and we bought vehicles and we bought signage. Uh, we, he was telling us to advertise in certain places, which we were doing, which was getting us no work. Uh, the rent was starting to become astronomical. We were getting drips and drabs. We initially came into the country as window tinters, as that's what my dad did in Botswana full-time he had a roaring business he had a staff of 16 people and so when we came to New Zealand that was what our business plan was based upon right once we came into Auckland and we were starting to meld into the market we realized very quickly that one the market is over flooded to it rains all the time it's not hot and three safety and security window film is barely used because there is no crime we were also thrown a curveball um, from immigration themselves so when we applied originally we were meant to be allocated to Hamilton which is a smaller town, we were allocated to Auckland. So we then had to go to Auckland, which I'm still not, to be honest with you, 100% sure how that happened. So all the market research that I had done and everything was based on Hamilton, not on Auckland. So when we arrived and we started this, everything was different. So very quickly we really learned that we needed to diversify. We started looking at ways that we could take window film and 
make it accessible to the New Zealand market. There was a lot of a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort spent into our product Clearview Blinds. We initially started the Clearview Blinds with ship blinds for marine, so because Auckland is a obviously we're surrounded by sea, like quite literally. So we decided that we needed to create something that every boat should need, which is basically sunglasses. Because water is super reflective, right? So and by the end of 2015 we had gone through the last of our investment money. It was exceptionally scary and we then had to do a full come back, pull, you know, full reevaluation of everything. So we did that. We then decided that we needed to find somebody else that this we needed somebody to help us with the installations and we didn't actually need the input of the salesperson anymore. So we did that and then we learned very quickly about the employment laws in New Zealand. And we were taken to tribunal. It was a whole thing, right? Obviously, as New Zealand employment law set, um, states, you know, we had to settle for a certain amount and that hurt us right bang again. Unfortunately, when you don't know something, you are vulnerable to it. So I found that we were very vulnerable to every scam, every pitfall. We fell for it all. By the end of the first year, we were pretty much out of money. And I didn't, we, none of us knew. We knew we, we, we still had two years and we could revive and we absolutely did. It was terrifying, terrifying. And just not knowing how to make this situation better. I didn't understand the marketing. I didn't, I felt like I was so underwater. I remember us going back to work in the January, very determined to make this company work whichever way we could. And slowly but surely we did actually build, build the company up. My husband and I went back to Botswana for a visit to go visit his mum and dad at the end of that year. So November of 2015. But it was lovely to go home and to visit and to see family. And that's when we found out that I was pregnant. Uh, we then flew back and I carried on working as normal. I was then, you know, I saw a midwife and I'll go through the whole process of having a child in New Zealand in another video, but I will give them a, an 11 out of 10 for my birthing experience. My son was born July of 2016. 2017 we needed to obviously now apply for residency. I went back to the agency and they had a look at everything and they were like this is not going to do and I was like what what do you mean and they said no your fi your financials in your original business plan don't match with what your financials are here. So we were very off, but we had managed to tick off all the other requirements. So for example, we had employed staff, we were using New Zealand suppliers, we had created a new product. So I was very taken aback by the fact that one requirement was going to knock me off this. 
they came up with the plan to get another further three year extension on our visa in order to then apply for residency in three years if our financials were up to scratch. It has been an uphill climb and we did. We, we've, every single year we have progressively grown um, and I would say quite significantly though not at the progression then unless i was became an overnight internet sensation please could you um that wasn't going to be possible i think we had to reapply or apply for residency by the end of 2020 so by the middle of 2020 i was already starting to prepare everything i was getting all our documentation together i then got hold of the agency that obviously originally dealt with us and i found out that the agent that had helped me previously they were like no sorry uh, she doesn't actually work here anymore but we can put you into contact with your original agent or somebody i had dealt with before that i I just didn't feel like they knew what was going on and that my visa specifically was a little bit above what her knowledge was. So I then became very, very concerned and I started to do a lot of research and I eventually stumbled across an actual immigration lawyer who I then got in contact with. I then went to him and I showed him everything and I realized what the difference between having a legitimate immigration consultant or advisor compared to someone who has maybe got their license but is not specifically trained or knowledgeable in your particular visa. So as is a very particular visa because of the circumstances. So we, we technically have an entrepreneurial work visa but it is separated into two applications because it is my family and my dad's family. And then we both have partners on that, but we are 50-50% shareholders of one company. I'll never forget when I went in and he, my immigration had a lawyer, lawyer had a look and he even, I remember him saying to me, it's two applications? Yes, it's two applications. And he was like, okay. <laughs> so, because of we had just obviously come out of the pandemic and the pandemic had affected us dramatically um i'm sorry if you can hear that that is grogs and he's discovered a ball so now he is running up and down the, the, the floor hello sweetie that is why our visa is so unique so obviously the pandemic that had affected us due to lockdowns we put in special visas to get another extension for a year which we did obviously we are still not anywhere near our target 2021 i had to do the process again um again because of COVID lockdowns, we actually had one of our suppliers that had went into liquidation. So we were without a supplier for a, a while. Um, we lost a lot of money in that. It became a never ending cycle, right? As I say, every step for us has been hard, has been, it hasn't been smooth sailing. So the end of 2022, I submitted our residency application because I can no longer ask for any more extensions. I cannot ask for any more special visas. The pandemic is over and rightly so, we need to apply for residency with the knowledge that they are probably going to come back and say no. So just based on the fact that we have not reached our proposed targets. We are halfway there. 
But because we don't reach that number, regardless of the circumstance, um, and I and I understand from immigration's point, of, you know, it's just a point system, and you need all five ticks, and we don't get that tick. So they're going to come back and say no. I still don't know in the meantime how long that will take to process. So uh, when I submitted, they said 19 months. When I looked the other day on the immigration website, they said 36 months. And please keep in mind that every six months while I'm waiting for that residency, I have to pay for a new visa, like a transitional visa while I wait for my residency application. Immigration literally just took all of my money <laughs> in December due to the increased price that residency in just the last three years when I was first going to apply or the second second time when we, we went to get our extension. Since then, the price for residency has doubled and obviously it's a double application because there's a visa for my dad and a visa for, for me. Yeah, that is exceptionally difficult to process that in regardless of how much I have worked and we have worked 11, 12 hour days, easy on certain days. Um, at one point my dad was going out and doing installations, then coming home and quoting. I was then doing invoicing, accounts, marketing, everything at night and during the day while trying to raise a baby and maintain a relationship. The mental health isn't factored into these decisions. At the end of this, even if they do come back and they say no, we can then, you know, obviously appeal the decision and then go to tribunal. That's obviously the route we are gonna have. And then we can plead the case in a more hum humanitarian way, humanitarian way. You know, for example, my son has lived here his whole life. In the time we have been here, my sister-in-law has moved over with her family. So my, my son now has cousins in New Zealand. We have watched family and friends come get their work visas, get their residency, get their permanent residency, get their citizenship. All in the time that we've just been trying to get residency. And that has been exceptionally draining, an exceptionally painful thing to desperately want, but not be able to get sometimes. And I just want to shed light on the, the back end, because I have invested an incredibly huge amount of money into a country that is going to reject me. I have created a family, I have created a home. So that's been our story. Uh, we are still in the midst of it, really. So I thought I just needed to get the timeline out and give you a brief overview, or well, not really brief, or a rambling excerpt of my life over the last eight years. And obviously I'm going to pinpoint certain points and create more videos. Thank you for listening to my story. And I'm always keen to hear if somebody else has a story like mine because I haven't met many people who have a story like mine, who are battling this way, who live in complete uncertainty. Thanks. And I guess we'll see you in the next one.